of yours out there have ever seen you in anything like this before. <laughs> you are incredibly sensual. Well, I owe it all to my director. Who also happens to be your husband. That's right. Danny Youngblood. Yes. Danny, how did it feel directing your wife in that nude scene with Barry Bonner? Well, Miss Murray and I have been rehearsing that scene for years. <laughs> <laughs> you are incorrigible. <laughs> and now you are a sex symbol. Oh, only in Hollywood. Only in Hollywood. Hooray for Hollywood. Can you believe Milt Cooperman telling everybody <laughs> that it was his idea to put you in the picture? Listen, Milt Cooperman owns the studio. Whatever is a good idea is a good idea. <laughs> and now you are a star. Oh. But that is a wreck of a picture. Oh, I've never seen on. anything so Danny, terrible. Danny, Danny, don't start on yourself. Now, you know, you always hate your own people. Oh, well, I know. But they loved it. Yeah, well, well the milkman scene wasn't bad. Oh, that was pretty honey. Good scene. Milkman scene. Everybody's... To the lady who brought sex back to cinema. To the director who believes in it. <laughs> yeah, take me anywhere. <laughs> Oh, dash it to ah. <laughs> Oh, Danny. What? Danny, look at my picture. Where? There. Oh, there. Any kind of thing to Danny. <laughs> script of your life again yeah and what about you margo's become the hottest sex star in hollywood oh she's off and running but uh, your work is through but knowing you as i yeah. do <laughs> where is the next eliza doolittle oh, and you there you are mr parker oh it's you i mean it's you <laughs> i've been looking all over for you oh you promised to show me Jean Harlow's bedroom. That I did, my dear. Show you what? This was Jean Harlow's house. Oh. Wasn't it? Oh, yes, it was, my darling. <laughs> Come with me. Hello. Yeah. This was not Jean Harlow's house. Well, I know that, and you know that, but Starry Eyes doesn't know that. Give me a break. <laughs> Danny, Danny, Danny. Rose really fixed up the old mansion, didn't she? She sure did. I could shoot a sequel with what this must cost. Danny, you don't do sequels, you do originals. Here's my sequels man, very talented kid. Work for Coleman, I'm breaking him in. Steve, Spider-Man. <laughs> That's Danny Youngblood. Tell him what you thought of the picture. 
Sexy, very sexy. I, for one, understood exactly what you were trying to say. I mean, the symbolism that you brought into the relationship is just... Oh, yeah, that, that's very good. This picture better be uh, a winner, make a lot of money, eh, Danny? Have a good time. Listen, Danny, I, hey, I love the use on. of the long lens, but yes, your camera movement, I wanted to ask... Where's the bar? When you go to the bar, scotch and water, huh? What? Oh, Harry, where have you been? Well, I heard the first review. Don't tell me. No, no, don't tell me. It said you were mesmerizing. You're kidding. Hmm? Who said that? Me. Harry, you're a fool, but you're my <laughs> fool, and you're a wonderful producer. <laughs> scotch on the rocks, please. Hi, how are you? Hi, Danny, hello. Hi, Danny. Oh, thank you. Man, I didn't much care for the picture. <laughs> Not much fun, is it? Oh, the party, I mean. My name's Danny. What's yours? Don, Don Barnett. Don Barnett. Nice name. There's a nice ring to it. You must be an actress. <laughs> Trying to be. <laughs> Any luck? A couple of commercials and a part on a movie of the week. Well, you're young yet. Are you studying with anybody? Taking some classes with Rothberg. Rothberg? Yeah, he's here tonight. I came with him and my stepfather. Well, if you're going to study, you might as well study with the best. Danny Youngblood, aren't you? Yes. I loved you, Mommy. Thank you. And your wife is wonderful. I'd give anything to be like her. No, no, no. You don't want to be like anybody else. You have some very impressive qualities of your own, like your eyes. Have you ever seen eyes quite like that before? There isn't a thought that enters that pretty little head that I don't see in those eyes. You're a nice man. You're a nice girl. Dawn. There you are, sweetheart. I've been looking all over for you. It's time to go. Mr. Youngblood, this is my stepfather, Harvey Denver. Hi, how are you? Hi. Well. Can we stay for a while? I said it's time to go. Oh, Mr. Youngblood. Yeah? Uh, if I catch you sniffing around here one more time, I'm going to punch your face in. Good night. <laughs> hey, baby. You want to make it with a sex symbol? Where, where? Here, here. You stars are so demanding. Mm. Aren't you glad? I'll get the booze. <laughs> mm -hmm. Keep the party going. <laughs> I'll talk to you. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you. Thank 
That was the agency again. Oh? Flo says Nichols wants me for the picture, and he won't take no for an answer. Isn't that wonderful to be popular? Yes, yeah. wonderful. And you got me in this position, you big moose. Now what should I do? Well, you're a big girl now. You decide. Oh, Danny, I can't. You're dying to do it, aren't you? Ah. Uh, I can taste it. <laughs> well, then what's the problem? Well, what about blue eyes? Do you really think you're right for blue eyes? Danny. Or are you doing it for me? Tell the truth. But, Danny, you really need this picture. You are not to worry about me. You are to concentrate on your own career. Your next picture has to be very important. It can set you up for years. Yeah, well, I want you set up, too. Oh, there's a pile of scripts in there just panning for me. Yeah, and they're all crap. True. <laughs> but I should take one and learn to love it with all my heart. I bet it'll be the run to the litter. Look, you and I can work together any time we want. But when do you get a chance to work with Mike Nichols again? Listen, Danny, we're talking three months on location here in Hong Kong. I mean, are you sure you won't mind? Of course I mind. I'd mind it more if you were unhappy. Does this mean that I've made a decision? You're a good guy, you know that. You're my favorite husband. I love you. <laughs> Mr. Youngblood. What are you doing here? Looking for you. How'd you find out where I live? Screen Actors Guild. Well, I mean, why? I have a script for a film. You're perfect for the part. But you'll get the part as a thousand to one, but I think it's worth the shot. But you don't even know if I can act or not. Oh, you can act. I saw your movie of the week. You're a little obvious, you use your hands too much, but you're talented, and that's the point. And if you're willing to do as I tell you... You mean you need to help me? And if you don't mind, hard work. I love hard work. Good. Um, Mr. Youngblood? What? Uh, my stepfather. What about him? <clears throat> well, I have to clear everything with him first. Would you like me to talk to him? No. As a matter of fact, it would be better if he didn't even know you were here. Why? Well, he doesn't like people coming around when he's not here. People? Or oh, men? He's just a little overprotective since my mother died, that's all. So you'll take care of him. Or we could forget the part. I'll take care of him. If you need me, call me. I will. Better go now, okay? You know, Harry, you were right. Blue Eyes is the best script Lou's ever written. Perfect vehicle for Margot. Margot doesn't want to do it. Besides, a girl should be younger. Oh, it can't be too much younger. She got a 60-year-old kid. Yeah, we'll get rid of the kid. Well, I like the kid. He's cute. Cute kids ruin the story. Now, I figured this girl should be 17, 18 tops. Uh, Danny, you've been friends a long time, huh? Yeah. The only reason we offered you this project is because... So of... I could deliver Margot? No Margo, no picture. That's the bottom line. You got Bob Micklin for the mail leave. What more do you want? Our uh, front office doesn't think Micklin has enough draw. They want insurance. Margo's the insurance. It's no use. I told you she's not going to do it. All right, then we're dead. You, uh, you want a coffee? No. Harry, I have just the right girl for this part. Mm -hmm. She's incredible. Yeah, aren't she's they all? Quality. She's vulnerable. She's essential. She's... She'll make the picture. Uh, you're wasting your breath. I can never tell the studio an unknown. You could if you had some decent film on her. Do you expect me to test this girl? You'll never regret it. Do you know how much a screen test costs now? Would you forget it? Is it worth a three-picture option on it? Oh, come on. Come on. That's pie in the sky. What happened with Margot? Okay. Okay. You created a superstar. And you didn't have the sense to sign her to a multiple-picture deal when you had the chance. And now you and the whole town are begging for her. 
Do you want to spend the rest of your life with egg on your face? I haven't even met this girl, and already I'm negotiating a contract with her? Mm -hmm. Oh, Danny. Danny. Tell me with a piece of broken glass. That old family's nuts. Get your things done. It's all right. Go ahead. She ain't going anywhere. Let her go. This doesn't concern you, man. Butt out. Fine. Call the police. You can talk it over with them. The police can't touch me. I'm her legal guardian. One look at her and they'll throw the book at you. She cut me, man. Do you want to stand up in court and tell them why she cut you? Go on. Get out of here. She's run off before, you know. She'll be back. When she decides to, fine. Come on, Young, but I knew what she was after the first time I saw you with her. I doubt it. It's pretty sweet stuff. You know what I mean? No. Oh, yeah. It's utopia. It's that sweet little pot of honey at the end of every rainbow. And the only difference between you and I, young blood, is the way we get there. Me? I can't go first class. You'll be back. She'll be back. Tell you what, man. Why don't you go back into your cage? place to stay. Why are you doing this? Because I like my stars in one piece. star out of somebody ordinary. People can't be fooled. A star is one of a kind, a special individual. A star creates fashion. She doesn't follow them. You look at her picture in some special, indefinable way. She fulfills your fancies. You look into her eyes. She doesn't have to say a word. It's all there. should be all things to all people. A star is a, a little girl, a sister, friend, a woman, a lover, all rolled up into one. If it were easy to be a star, everybody would be one. But very few people have what it really takes, and that's talent. Stick with your acting classes. Try new teachers. Learn new techniques. Learn how to use your talent. Define it, understand it, challenge it, keep it alive. But never let it get dull, and never take it for granted. Keep everything simple. Just the face should emerge, just the eyes. I never want to hear them say, look at those earrings, look at that stunning necklace. When they look at you, I want them to see you. And nothing but you. But mainly, well, look at her eyes. I mean, I, I can't see her eyes. I don't know what color her eyes are. She has beautiful eyes, but you've got too much liner on it all over.
want you to meet someone. Camera, I want you to meet Blue Eyes. His granddaddy was invented in 1893 by one Thomas Edison. He's also known as the magic box because that's what he creates. Magic? Mm -hmm. Nothing but images and emotion. Little bits of film, we can thrill them, we can scare them, we can sex them up, we can make them laugh, make them cry, make them think, make them fall in love. We give them dreams, we fulfill their dreams. And you can't put anything past him. He's your toughest critic. On stage, you act. On film, you think. On a movie screen, your face is 35 feet tall. So if you lie to him, or get lazy or fat. You'll make a 35-foot fool of yourself in front of millions of people. So don't. When you find a director you believe in, trust him. Put yourself in his hands. Let him use you. But don't you use him. You'll only hurt yourself. And one day when they ask you, you'll be able to tell them, my daddy was a camera, my mother the lights, and this, my own. Nobody can help me. Why don't you just go away? I think I can get you out of this place. How? What's it worth to you? To get away from him? Almost anything. Almost? Anything. for you, Mr. Cooperman. I told you to hold all calls. How old you say she is? Uh, would you believe she just turned uh, 18. 18. 18, Mill. What are you going to do when you run out of lollipops, Danny? Um, Mill, you know the beauty part of this deal is that uh, Danny's agreed to let you have the girl for three more pictures after Blue Eyes. That is, if you uh, give the word. Okay, make your picture. You won't regret this, Milt. Yeah, it's a good move. If I'm wrong, I can always take it out and trade, eh, Danny? This better be a winner, hot shot. You made a star, but you didn't make a hit. Two losers in a row, you'll be doing television. We're still counting the losses on your last turkey. Start the rewrites. Oh, I uh, I promised Merle that if the picture was a go, she could have a week in Acapulco. She can have a week in Acapulco. You and I are going to do the rewrites. Oh. Oh. How about Slim Sachs for the stepfather? Slim Sachs died a week ago. His agent tried to sell him to me this morning. Isn't this a beautiful place? What are you doing here? Oh, I thought I'd just pop in and see how movie stars live. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not a movie star yet, are you? But you know, if you stick with Youngblood, you should make it pretty soon. Drop dead, Harvey. And you know the movie magazines and the scandal sheets? They'd love to get their hands on some photographs and secrets about people. So what I thought I'd do, I'd put the family album out on the coffee table just to see if somebody might want to come along and chew the fat and talk about the humble beginnings of Don Barnett. Let's go on me. Nobody gets off scot-free. Come see me. Danny? Would you like a hot dog? I just got these. They're red hot. Well, they're still warm, at least. Would you like to have one? How about Who some champagne? Dying, what's Ice your cold. name? Danny, did they like it? Number one? Yes. They like the test. Number two, yes, you got the part. I got the part. But number three, you got a three-picture option on the whole deal. Picture option? Yes. Danny, <laughs> I did. Oh, Danny, I love you. I love you. Oh, gosh, I love you. 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 <laughs> Thank you.
Annie, why did you wait so long? I don't know. Yes, I do know. Something Harvey said. He said that basically he and I were alike. And only interested in you for one thing. I guess I had to prove to myself there was more to it than that. Was there? What do you think? You could never, ever be like Harvey. You're the kindest, most generous man that I've ever, ever known. Why? Because I've given you a few things. A few things? You mean like my car? Like this beautiful apartment? My beautiful clothes? That's not why I love you. You give of yourself. You don't love me blue eyes. Just need me. Is that the same thing? I don't know. Well, I know what I feel. I love you so much. That sometimes it scares me. Why? Well, because you could just walk out the door one day and never come back. Wait a minute. I, I just got here. I'm not going anywhere. Except home to your wife. So, how does it feel to be back, Margot? Well, if I never see another pair of chopsticks again as long as I live, it'll be too soon. Danny, know you were finished shooting and on your way back home? No, I came directly from the airport. Oh. I've been calling him from Hong Kong every night for a week, but he's never at the house. Well, there's been a lot of night shooting on this picture. Oh. Is that what they call it now, Harry? How's it been going? Oh, fantastic. Hmm? Fantastic. I mean, I mean, this new girl that Danny has found is absolutely sensational. She's no match for you, of course. Well, <laughs> that goes without saying, doesn't it, Harry? Margo, um... You're not going to make a scene, are you? Um, I don't make scenes. I just play the hell out of them if the script calls for it. Miss Barnett. She's a little nervous about the scene. The, the nude scene? <laughs> yeah, right. I can't stand it. You know, all these people here. They're just doing their job. We're all just one big family. I can't. I can't. You know that face. Show you, you can, you can, you can. If all of us can. All right, everybody, take off your clothes, everybody. Audrey, Bill, everybody off. Off with your clothes. Right away. Come on. Off with your clothes. Come on, take them off. Everybody. Off with their clothes. Take off your clothes. Come on. Take them off. Everybody off. Come on. Boom. Boom. Cha boom. Boom. Cha boom. Boom. Oh, it's you. What are you 
do you want? I came to help. No one can help me. Why don't you just go away? I think I can get you out of this place. How? What's it worth to you? To get away from him? Almost anything. Almost anything? Anything. Very slowly now, that's it. I'm tired. That's right. Slowly. Very slowly on the shoulder. That's it. Look right at me. That's right. Now let it fall to the floor. I have to keep looking right at me. Very slowly, one strap off the shoulder. That's it. Keep concentrating. Relax. Now, one strap down. That's right. Hold it. Keep looking right at me. Concentrate. I'm Margot Murray. May I come in? Yes, please come in. <clears throat> Did I uh, come at a bad time? I was just giving Danny Boy a bath. I don't remember letting him leave the house dirty. My dog. How sweet. Um, can I get you something to drink? Mm, no, no. I can only stay a minute. It's a very attractive place you have here. Thank you. At least you didn't skimp. Why don't you just say what you came to say? This isn't working out too well. <laughs> I, I, I promised myself I wouldn't come on like the, uh, the catty betrayed wife. And I did it anyway. I guess I played the part too often. On the screen, that is. Sorry. What do you want? Believe it or not, I come offering an olive branch in my fang. I want you to know you have nothing to fear from me. I mean it. I, uh, I don't blame you for what's happened. I'm not thrilled about it, but I don't blame you. You mean you and Danny were about to split up anyway? No. But I knew we were in trouble the first night he met you. How could you know? I didn't even know. Uh, Danny did. If you're trying to make me feel right, and you're doing a real good job. No. No, actually, I... I'm grateful to you. I mean, if this had to happen, I'd rather it was Danny walking out on me than the other way around. I mean, despite his claims to an open mind, he has a... very sensitive male ego. And I wouldn't want to bruise it. No, I care too much about him to do that. You just give him up just like that? Well, I, uh, I don't seem to have a choice. Oh, we'll always be friends. Not playmates anymore. Good friends. You 
take care of him for me. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. But how can you... If I loved a man the way that you loved Danny, I could never let him go. Never. You are young. Sounds like your battery's low. Well, that's all I need. Well, I wish I could help you, but I haven't got a jump cable. I guess you have to call a tow truck. Oh, uh, are you free? Sure. I'll make the call from home. Small can really get to you sometimes. I'll say. Haven't I had you for a fair before? I don't think so. It's funny. I know I've seen you somewhere. It's possible I get around. <laughs> you think you get around? You gotta try driving one of these sometime. Been doing it long, uh, Vince? Yeah, Vince, a couple of months. I usually work nights, though. I try to keep my days free. Really? Why is that? I go to school. I'm studying to be an actor. she got here. Would you like to come in for a drink? Thanks, but it's strictly against the rules. Promise I won't tell. <laughs> no, I would, but uh, I've got to make my fares. I mean, they know how much you're supposed to make in a shift. Well, surely they won't miss you for an hour or so. I mean, you, you must be entitled to a break. No kidding. I've got to keep that meter ticking. I can't afford to lose this job. That could be pretty expensive. Oh, I don't mind. I've been saving up. What about your husband? Oh, don't worry about him. Seems we're getting a divorce. They loosen you up so you can buy more clothes. <laughs> you were pretty loose, all right. I couldn't keep you out of the dressing Someone room. Someone had to make sure the clothes fit. <laughs> uh, oh, this has been such a wonderful day, Dennis. If we could laugh every day like we laugh today, my life would be complete. Will you kiss me and let me know I'm awake? I'm awake. This screen test you're about to see is for a possible new leading man for you. If you don't like him, we can turn down the sound. Yep. And 
We can neck. I've given you a lot, but it's nothing compared to what you've given me. I'm blessed to know you, twice blessed to love you, and I cherish every moment we've had together. And I'd be in heaven if you would have me as your husband. I just loved Blue Eyes. My wife and I both loved it. It did very well, didn't it? I think 25 million. You know, my wife predicted you'd be another Brigitte Bardot. What? I don't know about that. No, really. You've been on the cover of every national magazine. Your marriage to Danny got more coverage than Nixon's trip to China. Yeah, that was bizarre. I couldn't believe they made such a fuss over that. Do you really have yeah. some ambition that you... Yeah, have she's right in the middle of an interview. This business? Yeah. She'll be finished in a minute. I'll send her right over. That's a terrific view to have. Is there some kind of role that you'd like to do? I bring him an unknown. I put her in blue eyes and make her the hottest star he's had in years. Just dump her in his lap. And with a three-picture option on top of it. What do I get? Kick in the teeth. I ought to have my head examined. Danny, please, will you calm down? You can have a coronary. Uh, Danny? Hmm. I want you to hear this. What's the matter? Cooperman. That's what's the matter. I just got word that you won't be doing Go Go Girl next. Isn't that terrific? He promised me. You were there, Harry. He swore that I could have you for Go Go Girl if I would just let her do Fools Die Young first, didn't he? Didn't he? Okay, he promised. We're getting out of here. Come on. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are you going? If she's not going to do my picture, she's not going to do any picture. Danny, hold it. Are you going to tell him or do I have to? Well, yes, Harry. Why don't you? do your picture even though I want to. I can't do a picture for Milk Cooperman either. I'm pregnant. You what? I'm not gonna have a baby. I'm a lump of clay that Danny molds into whatever he wants. How's he using you? Well, what else would you call it? What if I didn't want to be in the movies? What if I wanted to just be ordinary like other people? Look, I know what you're going through. I went through the same thing myself. I fought Danny for years. Nobody was going to deprive me of my individuality, my independence. I owe Danny a debt I can never repay, and you should thank your lucky stars that he chose you. Sometimes it scares me. I mean, what happens when he's finished with me? Well, that's where you have a definite advantage. I waited till it was too late to have a baby. Yeah, I suppose so. Like it? Mm. I wonder what Daniel thinks.
are you? Hi. I couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. I was hungry. Dr. Gold have to say? Um, he said that everything is fine, and it's a textbook pregnancy. You don't sound very reassured. There's something I haven't told you, Danny. When I found out I was pregnant, I was going to have an abortion. I lied to you, too. My mother isn't dead. She's in an insane asylum. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. She's in restraint. I'm, I'm sorry. But, Danny, I'm just afraid that I'm going to be the same way. No. Yes, I am, because sometimes I have these weird feelings and I get uh, upset. Oh, honey, and, honey, honey, weird, we're... A sign of anything, I'd have been locked up years ago. <laughs> well, anyway, I was worried about the baby. So, because you were so busy with the picture, I called Harry, and he got a psychiatrist for me. What did the psychiatrist say? Well, she did some tests, and then she called my mother's hospital, and they say that everything is fine. Well, they should know. Yeah, I guess. And I just... I was worried about the baby. Now, listen. This baby is one part you and one part me, and all the love that we could put into making her. So how could she miss? I love you. I love you. I love you so much. Listen. You have an early call to make. So we should go to bed. Okay. <laughs> Would you care if it was a boy? Of course I wouldn't care. But if you could manage a girl, I care even less. Can't win them all. It's not. Good book. Proust. Remembrances of things past. Pretty serious reading. I like it. Besides, it keeps me occupied. Would you like to watch polo? I'm a doer, not a watcher. Why don't you play? I came to meet you. I'd like to audition for your next picture. Okay, next, please. Next. Ladies, can I have your attention? Please, come on. Number 37. Number 37, Miss Susan Orwell. Miss Orwell, are you oh, here? Right here. Yeah, thank you. Could you follow me, please? Susan Orwell. Good afternoon, Miss Orwell. Hello. Can you tell us your age? Uh, how old is the part? <laughs> Do you have any acting experience? Oh, yes. I studied for two years at the Neighborhood Playhouse in New York and one year at RADA. RADA? RADA? Yes, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in London. She thinks we're doing Shakespeare. Uh, you do understand here that we're auditioning for the part of a go-go girl. Oh, yes. You did bring your music? Yes. Fine, just give it to the engineer and begin whenever you're ready.
Hiya, sweetheart. How you been? A good life must agree with you. Oh. What's it been, two or three years now? I haven't been keeping track, Harvey. Saw your last movie. You were terrific, especially the last scene. You looked as good in those sheets as you used to at home. Oh, come on, Don. I really miss you. I think about you all the time. The old place hasn't been the same without you. Why? Don't you have anybody to clean up for you, Harvey? Hey, we had a great thing, Don. You know that. We ain't had it so good since you left. She has a pretty severe concussion, Danny, but otherwise she's holding up pretty well. And the baby? She lost it. And I'm afraid she'll never be able to have another baby. I'm sorry. Can I see her? Well, she's pretty heavily sedated. She needs to rest. been a naughty girl again. Would you like to show me? This has been going on for months, and it's not getting any better. First the pills, and now this. God knows what's going on. Well, I've talked to her psychiatrist. She wants to start Dawn back in therapy again as soon as it's possible. It's not going to do any good. I've been begging her to go. Well, I think she's ready now. This has given her a good scare. And by the way, with that heart murmur of yours, I'd watch the booze if I were you. And the smoking. Mrs. Youngblood, you shouldn't be up for bed. Where are you going? I'm going shopping. Danny said I could. Oh, are, are you sure you feel up to all that? Oh, I feel wonderful. Isn't that marvelous? Oh, yes, Mrs. Youngblood. Will you drive carefully, oh, please? Oh, yeah. yes. Promise? Oh, yes. Yeah. Will you drive carefully, please? Good afternoon, miss. 
Got a very nice table for you. Thank you. Uh, may I get you a drink while you're uh, looking at the menu? Iced tea, please. Yes, ma'am. Just good morning. Is my horse ready? That's all she said. And she was a beautiful, tall, statuesque blonde. And he was the classiest guy you'd ever want to meet. But she treated him like a stick boy. She acted as if she didn't know that he owned the whole ranch. And the worse she treated him, the more he wanted to be. The guy was beside himself. He didn't sleep for weeks. He felt mad at her. And the day she got married, he did the most amazing thing I ever heard of. Coming in, or you just gonna sit there and think about it? She's dead. Oh, honey. <clears throat> well, part of her is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but, Daddy, you wanted a little girl. Only because she was part of you. I tell you what. <clears throat> Let's adopt one. Let's adopt a dozen. Would it be the same? One part you, and one part me. And all the love that it took to make you remember. Danny. Go to sleep, honey.
going on? Life. Oh, buzz off, Danny. If today is what you call direction, then why bother to show up? Well, what do you want, line readings? You already have your character. I'm only trying to stay out of the way. Well, don't, damn it. I still need help. Then help yourself. I always told you never to expect help from anybody else except yourself. Don't check out on me, Danny. God, why do actors always think the sun revolves around them? I've got a script that gets worse the deeper I get into it, a budget that would embarrass a student film, and I've got a leading man, and I use the term loosely, more concerned about his tight pants than he is about his lines. We're not talking about the picture, are we? <sighs> no. You think it was Don who cut my car up, don't you? Worries me is why. To scare me away. She doesn't know about us. Don't count on it. We're smarter when we're in pain. Oh, we're all in pain. Don't do that to me, Danny. I'm shaky about this, and I mean it. Shaky? About what? About what? About what's next? Do I go up and smoke some night while I'm sleeping? Oh, don't be so... And furthermore, I'm a little shaky about us. What do you mean? You and I. I'd like to know how you describe this relationship. Pure lust. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously? You're a godsend. You don't know how much I need you now. But that's now. What about later? I told you not to expect too much. I'll never leave her. I'm not looking for any more than this. You know that. Well, what are you worried about? Sometimes people get hurt. And that's one thing I don't want. Nobody's gonna get hurt. Not if I can help it. You're too good a friend. <laughs> Well, how'd you like to step into my office, then? Well, I think that would be very nice. Okay. Okay. Ready? Ready with you. Very well. Take a letter, Miss Martin. <laughs> you know what I do when I call for a reservation? I use your name. I think we get a better table. Yeah, yeah you're the biggest yeah. star, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you decided to come to lunch with me. You know, I haven't seen you alone. I think a girl's lunch is nice sometimes, don't you think? I don't know what that is on your plate. Looks like somebody enjoyed it already. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Look at this. All right, I'll get somebody to take care of you. It's so clumsy, Michael. Don't stop it, darling. It's only a glass. I wish I was more like you. Oh, one rhinoceros in the family is enough. You stay as sweet as you are. By the way, I read the script that Danny sent over. Time for Tears? Yeah, that's the one. I really love it. You can tell him that I am definitely interested in the other part, so as soon as you're ready to go back to work, let's talk. You wouldn't be doing this just for me, though, would you? Would I do a picture purely out of friendship? Yes, you're one of the most generous people I know. Do you know who I have in mind to play the sexy young tennis pro? He wouldn't happen to have used to have driven a cab, would he? Is that perfect? Uh-huh. Is that inspired? Mm -hmm. Now, oh, not a word to Danny, because he's going to take some very careful handling. OK, I promise. Won't it be wonderful? Four of us off together somewhere on location doing a picture. Mm -hmm. ah. I gotta go. Okay. Waiter. I'll get it. Okay. All right. Right. Next time it's my turn, okay? Okay. Take care of your little self. Okay. I love you. I love you too. Goodbye, baby. Bye. How's it going? I'm worried about her. I think we should call Danny. Why? Well, for one thing, she looks terrible. And for another, she just stole my sunglasses. What does she want with your sunglasses? I don't know. Hello. I'm Don Barnett, Danny's wife. Yes, I know. Can I talk to you? May I come in? Uh, yes. 
I hope I didn't come in a bad time. Is, uh, is there ever a good time for something like this? What a nice little place you have here. It's all right. You really should have Danny get you something a little bit bigger, though. I mean, he obviously can afford it. Look, Mrs. Youngblood, Oh, I... please, call me Don. Uh, I don't know why you're here, but I wish you'd get to the point. I'm sorry. I guess I, I didn't want to come off like this. Like what? Well, like a caddy wife, you know. I actually came to give you an apology. Your car. I had a feeling that was you. Yes, it was very childish of me, and I'm sorry. Please send me the bills and I'll reimburse you for it. Look, I don't want your money, and I don't want your husband. I just want you to leave me alone. Well, that's what I came to tell you, is that I'm not going to interfere anymore. And I don't really blame you. Um, I'm not thrilled about it, but I don't blame you. Danny and I love each other very much. It's just that now there are no more surprises. That's all. And whatever he needs, it seems that you can give it to him right now, and I can't. Just what is it you're trying to say? I'm glad that it's Danny who's leaving and not the other way around. He's very fragile. He's got a very sensitive ego. I would never want to hurt him. I don't think you understood what I said. I don't want your husband. Yes, we made love a few times because you were ill and he was lonely. And I was scared and, and he was there. But that's all there was to it. Believe me, I understand. You're very much in love with him. He's a wonderful, generous, terrific man. I am not in love with your husband. Just promise me that you'll take care of him. He was the best thing that ever happened to me, and I'm sure that he will be for you, too. Look, Mrs. Youngblood... No, wait. don't touch me. I'm unclean. Good evening, Gladys. Good evening, Mr. Youngblood. Uh, Mrs. Youngblood up in her room? Yes, she's been up there all day. She didn't eat anything, sir. Oh. Thank you. Listen, I hope you don't think that I'm being pushy. It's just that after I left your place, well, I got to thinking that maybe you could use a little help. You know, I could give you a few pointers on what Danny really likes. Like your hair, for instance. I think it definitely should be a shade lighter. And maybe a little cut, too. Not too short. He doesn't like anything real short. Um, as a matter of fact, I know this wonderful hairdresser. His name is Giorgio. He's right in Little Santa Monica. As a matter of fact, I'll give him a call and set up an appointment for you if you like. Um, oh, and I had a look at your clothes in your closet. You're really into prints and, and things, aren't you? Well, Danny likes to keep everything very simple and, and basic. You know, he likes a woman to have a lot of class. So maybe as a man, why don't we get together and have lunch? And then I could take you to some of his favorite shops. Um. One more thing. In the sex department, I don't know how things are between you and Danny, but there's always room for improvement, right? Well, and there's one thing that I learned to do for Danny, and what it is is you wait until he's sound asleep, and then you crawl under the covers real slow, and... Stop seeing each other for a while. Yeah. Picture ends in a few days. Why don't you go away somewhere for the rest? 
Yeah, I could use a vacation. I'm sorry I got you into this, Susie. I love her so much. I don't know what to do. I wouldn't hurry up there if I was you, young blood. I took real good care of her for you. I left her up there purring like a kid.
I thought I'd find you here. You shut your phone off for weeks. You cut yourself off from everybody who cares about you. I'm sorry, Danny. I know you're in pain. I know how you feel. I miss her, too. But this ridiculous penance has got to stop. You didn't kill her. You gave her everything you have to give. That's all any human being can do. You're not God. You can't change it. And you can't crawl in there with it, so knock it off. There's nothing more here for you. Please. I miss you, my friend. Check the alcohol content in your blood. Man, you were an accident just looking for a place to happen. Since when have you become a shrink? Doesn't take a shrink to figure out what's wrong with you. Well, just a quack, huh? It's been a year, Danny. Don't the psychiatrist has told you a dozen times her mental illness was congenital. Look, you're bothering me. Why don't you go make your rounds? Go away. I'll look in on you later. when I visit him in the hospital. Thank you, Harry. <laughs> yeah. I'll go back to my book. Goodbye. Harry Lanson? Mm-hmm. Now we need two of Oh, he's got a new picture for Danny. A contemporary thing based on a Greek myth. But I thought you said Danny wouldn't even consider any new scripts. Oh, well, he'll read this. Something he's always wanted to do, but the studio always hated the idea. So? What made them change their minds now? Well, Harry got Lou to do a rewrite. <laughs> Terrific. Does he even care about doing a film? I've agreed to start. You? Mm -hmm. But I thought you said we were looking for something we could do together. We were. We were. And this is it. Lou has written a terrific part for you. In fact, it's a lead. A little misfixing. Mm -hmm. You got anything else you need fixed? Stop talking. Mm 
Of course, we'll have to find just the right girl to play the daughter, but that's your department. You're sure you want to do this? Well, I got to level with you, Danny. There's a part in there for Vince. No, no, no he'd be perfect for it. Actually, I saw him in a film a few weeks ago. He's damn good. Danny, that'll mean so much to him coming from you. Hey, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be the discoverer of stars, not you. Why should you have all the fun? <laughs> anyway, you'd read it, and if you like it, well... I'd really like to do it, but only if you'll direct. Now, that's what I call loyalty. Honey, that's what I call love. Excuse me, Mr. Youngblood. It's time for your sponge bath. Oh, my dear. All the comforts of home. <laughs> Let me know what you decide. Okay. Thanks for coming to buy us. Danny, if we do do this picture, could you do something about the title? Demands already? Only one, I promise. But a girl, a boy, and a bed has got to go. <laughs> How are we feeling today? Well, we could be feeling better. Now, would you like to do it yourself, or would you like me to do it for you? Well, no, I've got this problem. Well, then, let's see. Where would be a good place for us to start today? Mm -hmm. Get on! Well, oh, that, well, that is uh -huh. beautiful. That's for the Cleopatra. Yes, a charming little spoof called a pain in the ass. <laughs> oh, of course. Just, course. You are a genius. A <laughs> best in the business now. You want to use her for a picture. Well, yeah, that's an example of your work, Dolores. We're going to have to talk. Oh, any time, any time. Mm -hmm. Nobody in this town is that good. It looks spectacular. Uh -huh. Just beautiful. Mm -hmm. How does it feel? Feels good. Feels, feels a little tight under this arm. It does? Yeah. Uh, right here. Under the sleeve? Yeah. Mm. You know what that is? Uh -uh. It's a lining. Uh -huh. We'll loosen it right away. Okay. Don't worry. It'll be fine. Anyway, yeah. by the time I left, I really had the feeling that Danny would just go for it. Yeah. The problem is the girl. The problem is the title. Problem. A girl, a boy, and a bed. Who dreamed that up? I thought it was very clever. No, you did it, huh? That's right. That's right. Maybe we could offer the part to Susan Orwell. Susan Orwell? Hmm. She's too old. I mean, the girl should be no more than 15, 16. Not if I'm going to play the mother. All right, I'll call around. I'll see who's available. Cool it, Harry. He needs the challenge. The challenge. Challenge of the hunt. If you ask me, all he needs is a good woman. You are so uncomplicated. Maybe that's why I love you. If anything is going to bring Danny back from the dead, it's going to be the search to find that girl. And that's what he lives for. Take that away from him. What's he got? Hmm? Pandora? As a child woman, with eyes that laugh and a hint of mischief, and promise everything. And good luck. Yes? Can I come in? Sure. Hi. Hi. Um, do you have the TV section or anything? I just checked in, and I don't know what's on tonight. Sure, here. Oh. Thanks. Um, my name is Angel. What's yours? Danny. Um, my room is just down the hall. Oh. What is this for? Traction. I brought my back. How'd you do that? Lousy driver. How long will you be here? Consuls. Oh, that's nothing. You'll be out of here in a couple of days. I don't know. Doctor says in my age they can be tricky. How old are you? How old do you think I am? Oh, 18, 19. I'm not even out of high school yet. I never would have guessed. <laughs> Well, that's because I'm so well-developed already. My mama says that's my greatest asset. She says that's why I get so much work. Work? Modeling. Oh, well, I understand that. I do some acting, too. You know, on TV. You sound like a very talented girl. Yeah, and I'm learning to sing and dance. Well, regular Pandora. <laughs> huh? The Pandora, that means all gifted in Greek. Oh. You Greek? Uh, no. She's a character in Greek mythology. Supposedly the first woman. I thought that was Eve. Well, they had a lot in common, except in Greek mythology, each a god gave Pandora a gift or power. Really? What for? So she could bring about the ruin of man. <laughs> and you think I'm like her? I don't know. Are you? Well. 
I sure don't want to bring about the ruin of man. You might not have any choice in the matter. <laughs> I gotta go. I'll bring this back to you tomorrow, okay? Okay. Thanks for the history lesson. Mythology. Mom? How'd it go? He's cute. I like him. Boy, this better work, because I shouldn't want to have my tonsils out for nothing. Don't worry. It'll work. You just leave everything to your mother. Star Maker continues. Mother and daughter rival for the Star Maker's affection. Now, I don't want Danny to think he's hired a teenage lush. I want Danny to think he's hired a woman. While Margot battles for her life. We're talking about your life, not some movie. And Danny makes Angel's dream come true. By the time I get through with you, you rule the world. I want him locked up, Mr. Winters. I want him put away, and I want his career destroyed. Brock Hudson is the Star Maker. 